In today's Farm Report, dairy producers have until November 20th to enroll for coverage under the 2016 Margin Protection Program. Rod Bain has this report. Dairy producers, your deadline to enroll for 2016 Margin Protection Program coverage is fast approaching, November 20th to be exact. And while created as part of the 2014 Farm Bill, the administrator of the USDA agency that oversees MPP adds, This safety net protection is not automatic, so producers should visit their local FSA offices to enroll before the 20th of November. Val Docini of the Farm Service Agency says that as of the first week of November, I think we've seen almost half of all the dairy farms in America making an election about their 2016 coverage. Now as a reminder of how MPP works, it covers that margin, the difference between feed costs and the price of milk, and when it falls below a certain level, coverage protection will kick in and that dairy operator will receive a payment. He adds the election is not just about whether or not to enroll an MPP but also the type of coverage to enroll in. For those that don't want to participate in enhanced coverage, they can obtain catastrophic coverage for an administrative fee of $100. The administrator notes that MPP is a good risk management tool for producers, considering the cyclical nature of the dairy industry and its markets. He uses as an example a recent FSA estimation based on current MPP participation rates. If this program had existed before this farm bill, producers in 2009, which was a particularly bad year for milk prices, if they'd invested $73 million in payments, they would have received about $1.4 billion in financial protections. So Docini says the dairy producers, even catastrophic coverage through MPP, is better than no coverage at all. I'd really strongly encourage dairy operations to take a look at the different levels of margin protection that the program offers and seek one of those. And they can do that by visiting their local Farm Service Agency office or going online to this web address, www.fsa.usda.gov dairy. This is just a really good insurance tool for dairy operations around the country to consider. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. This is the start of a very busy time for the folks here at the Agriculture Department's Meat and Poultry Hotline, and you may think it's early for this, but... The first week of November, we get questions about buying a turkey. Tita Haynes is a food safety expert, registered dietitian with the hotline, the number of which we'll give you in a minute. And yes, people are already calling the folks here, and according to Tina, who's been here for over eight years... The number one question is how much turkey should I buy, and we say you should allow for about one pound per person. If you want leftovers then you can buy a little bit more than one pound per person. But that's the average. And, of course, the hotline experts are available to talk to you in person on the phone about any turkey or holiday food safety question Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Our phone number is 1-888-MP-HOTLINE or 1-888-674-6854. And you can also get answers online anytime at askkaren.gov, askkaren.gov. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington. Where do studies in agriculture and the arts fit in with science, technology, engineering, and math education? Rod Bain with the U.S. Department of Agriculture has this report on how some are asking that STEM be turned into STEAM. Over the last two decades, there's been a push within education of all levels, from kindergarten all the way to undergrad and graduate areas of higher institutions of learning, to boost both the teaching of and the numbers of students going into career fields in science, technology, engineering, and math, known by the acronym STEM. The STEM education realm is in multiple domains, one of which is that we want to have young people that are being educated to have a pretty good foundational knowledge in science, technology, engineering, and math. But the director of USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Sunny Ramaswamy, and others say perhaps that acronym needs to be modified and for good reason. As a leader in the Agriculture Department's research and extension realms, he sees where an A can be added, making STEM STEAM to represent the need for ag-based education and the connection between ag and STEM components. Among those in the corporate world that are aware of this connection include Steve Mizell of Monsanto, who notes, A number of projects including initiatives working with Alcorn State focused on soil and water quality, food security, biotechnology, and one that I'm especially proud of, an outreach program where administrators and faculty and students work with local schools pre-K through 12th grade to increase interest in STEM. 
However, there are some who believe the A can be interchangeable with arts-based education. Dava Newman, an aeronautics professor and currently deputy administrator at NASA, talked about this importance at a recent ceremony highlighting a STEM-based agreement between USDA and NASA. We have data on all of it, whatever sparks their interest, so that we can get them to study the Earth, to think about food and food production, think about sustainability. It's really important that we include the painters and the storytellers and the musicians. They inspire me. I am a kind of a geeky nerd and aerospace engineer, so I look for the artists and the storytellers to just tell it a different way, because it's a story for everybody. Then there are those such as the president of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, Juliet Bell, who explains, We have to coin a new term. We use STEAM instead of STEM to include agriculture. So I think we're going to perhaps have to call it STEMA. Yet as NIFA director Ramaswamy points out, studies show all these disciplines are needed to inspire and produce well-rounded students and professionals with both well-developed technical skills and more importantly, non-cognitive skills needed to excel in careers and life. Technical skills, that's easily taught, actually. But to take all the data and to think about it and put it in the context of weather and climate and markets and all of these things takes critical thinking skills and problem-solving skills. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. The latest Agriculture Department supply and demand forecast has farmers this marketing year seeing prices drop from this past season's already low prices for wheat, corn, and soybeans. They may be coming down so far in, in some cases that farmers aren't meeting their cost of production. Agriculture Department Chief Economist Rob Johansson, he says that's not a given for all farmers, but a definite possibility for some. And farmers, of course, will try to adjust. Producers start digging into their capital reserves, and they also see a reflection in the negotiated uh, land rent values. And also... We would expect to see an increase in loan activity occurring in the banking sector. He says that's already happening also at planting time. We would expect that some acres, marginal production acres, low yield acres, uh, high cost of production acres would likely exit from production if prices remain too low to cover production costs on those acres. But farmers don't just depend on price. Johansson says many will have some backup with revenue insurance plans plus the various farm bill safety net programs that can pay off when prices fall. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington.